Dr. Jerome Corsi joins us. Then I'll go into overdrive and take some more phone calls and finish John's amazing report from Alabama, if he can hold with us. Dr. Jerome Corsi is a Ph.D. from Harvard University in political science in 72. He's currently a senior staff reporter at WorldNet Daily. He's a what, three or four-time number one New York Times bestseller. He's an expert of political violence and terrorism and advised the State Department and other agencies in secret operations. Uh, in 1981, he received a top-secret clearance from the Agency for International Development, where he assisted in providing anti-terrorism training to embassy personnel. For 25 years, Dr. Corsi developed working with banks throughout the United States and around the world to develop financial service marketing companies to assist banks in establishing uh, broker loan deal insurance subsidiaries provide financial planning products and services to their retail customers. He's a noted financial services speaker and writer. In fact, that's what he's better known for by the general public than somebody fighting the New World Order. And so we're going to stop right there, JeromeCourcy.com, WND.com. Uh, no stranger to this show. He's probably been on 40 times in the last 10 years. So I want to cover the waterfront with him in the 25 minutes we have left now. I want to get into... His take on Donald Trump, knowing him, talking to him a lot, is he for real or is he Democratic Party operative like George Will said? Well, I mean, you know, John Boehner's a Democratic Party shill for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, then more importantly, world financial meltdown. How serious is it with Greece and China and the rest of it? Separately, I never said Jade Helm, everybody knows this, who listens to this show, was imminent martial law. I said it's part of the militarization, the end of posse commentatus that everybody's talked about. They have hundreds of articles. They're back. They haven't done this in a few weeks. Hundreds of articles a day saying that I want to kill gay people with no proof. The New York Times that I believe it's an imminent plan to murder Texans. And they show no link. They just say a plan to eradicate the public. Uh, and uh, just a whole bunch of other craziness that I want to kill police. And then, I mean, they're really assassinating my character right now at a level I've never seen. All of this is actionable for defamation, libel, slander. The problem is I can't sue them all. So it's a court of public opinion. Defend me, pray for me, get the word out. But this is them getting rid of the propaganda ban for the Pentagon and CIA domestically. This is what they do. This is hardcore. Our government's been seized by criminals. They're using the powerful organs of propaganda against me, against Rand Paul, uh, and against others. And it is unprecedented. And I see it happening to Donald Trump and want to defend him because what he's saying is true and he's being misconstrued and taken out of context. But I know he was for the assault weapons ban. He supported Hillary and Dr. Corsi years ago talks to Trump a lot and, 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 and had his concerns. So he joins us now to cover the waterfront from WND.com. Doctor, thanks for taking time out. Hi, Alex. It's always a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So you've got the floor. What do you want to tackle first? Well, I mean, uh, let's, let's follow up on uh, Donald Trump and your comments on Donald Trump. I mean, first of all, I think Donald Trump is, uh, this time, I think he's for real, much more than before. And, and the, I don't even think that's the real question. The real question is that Donald Trump has moved the debate of the presidential election onto a ground that is, one, telling the truth and saying things directly, not worrying about being politically correct. That's drawing Donald Trump a very big audience. And secondly, on immigration. He's put the immigration topic on the front burner. And he's, he's really ignited the topic such that even Hispanics can say, look, we're not for a round of illegals that are criminals. We are not invading the company country to take it over with you know, with with uh, criminals and undesirable people, uh, I think that this is the proper time to call the Obama administration for failure to enforce immigration laws. And Donald Trump is on that agenda. He's doing a good job, and I support his efforts. I think he's really leading the debate. And uh, I say, quit worrying about if he's going to stay in the debate or where it's going to go. The fact is, he's doing a good job right now, and he's probably likely to continue that as long as he's winning support and gaining attention. And I don't see any end to this. Well, I sure hope he's for real because he's really smart. He's charismatic. I think he'd make a great president if he won't come after our guns, if he'll really cut taxes. Because let's face it, you couldn't hold this country back if they just cut taxes. 
The system wants a Cloward and Piven. They don't want us to become wealthy. They want to control us. They want us poor. So, yeah, anybody could fix America if they went back to our basics. But in your gut, do you think he's going to step down later and let Jeb Bush slide in and beat a Rand Paul or somebody else? Well, I mean, we, he's got a Ross Perot factor going right now. And if Ross Perot had stayed in the race, we may never have had Bill Clinton as president. And I think this time around, Trump sees the opportunity. Trump could actually emerge victorious this year. I think that's in 2016. I think it'll be a great surprise. I think he's going to be in the GOP debates. He's going to set the agenda. And my guess is... Trump is not going to want to pull out. He's going to want to stick it through this time. And I'm certainly hoping and pulling that he does. In the immediate, the change that he's registering in the presidential campaign is extremely positive because it's putting on the agenda questions that those of us who have opposed this new world order, this, this entire loss of America, which, Alex, I've joined you in fighting against, uh, this is something Donald Trump is championing, and I want to see him continue. But I, let's let's move on to it. There's so many topics to talk about. Um, you've Ray, you you laid out a good agenda. I mean, Iran. I mean, I cannot believe how fast the Obama administration. I predicted when I wrote Atomic around 2005 that John Kerry would be the one who would actually negotiate a way to give Iran nuclear weapons, and here, ten years later. I was that book in 2005. John Kerry has pulled the same Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton that was done with North Korea and saying, why don't we give them, you know, enriched uranium and let them have a nuclear industry on the promise that they won't make. By bombs. the way, I got to interrupt. How on earth, when he was nowhere near the position he is now, or Secretary of State, how did you predict that he'd be the man 10 years later to do this? It was an instinct. I mean, I, I knew he was, when I wrote the book, he had just lost the presidential campaign. And I wanted to make it clear, you know, that it was John Kerry who was pushing this agenda that we ought to trust Iran the way we were trusting North Korea. And it was your and book was, that's credited as shooting him down. Yeah, what well, was for, the Unfit for Command, which I co-authored with John O'Neill, was the book that destroyed uh, Kerry's uh, presidential opportunity in 2004. And by 2005, I was on Kerry because I knew he was going to. Kerry was being paid, and by the Iranian government through this uh, Hassan Namazi, who's now in federal prison. He was a. He, I always believed Hassan Namazi was an agent of the Mullahs, and he was here supporting Hillary Clinton, supporting uh, John Kerry. He's in federal prison for violating bank lending laws. He was a criminal to begin with. And I pointed this out when I wrote Atomic Iran. I did figured John Kerry got paid to make sure that Iran would get nuclear weapons. So you're saying John Kerry's really a foreign operative? I'm saying John Kerry, from the, from the time he ran for president, was happy to accept Iranian money through Hassan Namazi. And he knew that his mission was to allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. I'm saying I've said that about John Kerry since 2005. Well, it's clear they're letting him get him. But from my military sources, special forces people pretty high up, even six, seven years ago, I'm on record saying the Saudis secretly have some nukes and that Iran already has nukes. They just want to be able to have this nuclear program to then uh, come out and claim later they made them themselves. What's your intel? Uh, Iran wants to be able to make its own weapon so it doesn't just have one. You know, it doesn't just have one or two. Ron wants the world. So hold thing. on, your sources confirm then, or or uh, you think there's validity that they have a couple of weapons? Oh, they could easily, anytime they want to. I mean, they've been able to do that for years, but they want to be able to have more than one when they actually use it, so that they could have a threat to retaliate against other countries that are going to retaliate against them. Iran is planning a nuclear war. What Obama has just put into place with this agreement is the certainty now that we will have a nuclear war in the Middle East. It's only a matter of time. And Good the Iranians will wait until they have enough weapons to be able to retaliate against anyone who counters them for dropping a dozen nukes on Israel. It only takes one or two nukes to destroy Israel. And, and we have a, quote, uh, uh, Iranian 
obsession, but also a Saudi obsession with Iran. Don't these two groups, Shiite, Sunni, hate each other yeah. even more than the West? I, I've been writing, and if you take a look at a book I called, a world called, you know, Is Israel Can't Wait. Israel and Saudi Arabia have been working together, including on military exercises, I think for at least the last five years, uh, planning a strike on Iran. Uh, I think Israel realized, I certainly told Israel, told the top government in 2008, 2009, it was over there when Obama gave his speech in Cairo. And I was delivering the message to top leaders in the Israeli government that Obama was going to turn on Israel and abandon Israel. I remember you said that on this show and I just didn't believe you. And I, I, I got to say this, you have been probably the most accurate person other than like a Ron Paul that we've ever had. I mean, you really know your stuff. I'm not kissing your butt. It's just true. It's almost like you got a crystal ball. Well, it's, you know, God has given me the ability to kind of look at things and be able to assess them. I would have been, I've, I sometimes feel like the books that I write, it takes 10 years for them to happen. And then they happen. America for Sale is also going to happen. That's another book. So I'm saying the an agreement between Iran between Israel and Saudi Arabia against Iran is a certainty. And when Israel attacks Iran, which I think it almost inevitably will do, it will be with the assistance of Saudi Arabia, with the Obama administration, if it's still in power, actively opposing Israel. And the Jews in America who have any allegiance left to Israel better realize that Obama is an enemy of Israel. Well, that's my next question. Six years into this strategy to overthrow Gaddafi, overthrow Egypt, overthrow Syria, overthrow allies or neutral groups to then put in Saudi Arabian backed head choppers like that's Twilight Zone. I know our government's got corruption and problems, but, you know, Obama's cousins and people and funding the Muslim Brotherhood. This is an insane strategy. Well, Obama has been Muslim Brotherhood from the beginning. And Hillary Clinton has Huma Abedin, was her. Uh, I'm convinced, lover and her top associate for years. And the two of them have been Muslim Brotherhood. Hillary and Obama have been the greatest gun runners in American history. And they are secretly and have been secretly going back to when Chris Stevens was first sent into Benghazi. It's been Hillary and Obama running guns to the Al-Qaeda-affiliated sure. militia and into Syria, all in favor of the Muslim Brotherhood, because these groups have Muslim Brotherhood origins. And, you know, this is what I said was the cause of, of Chris Stevens' death. He was trying to take the weapons back. They were looking for the... Well, that's my next question, and Colonel Schaefer said it within a couple of weeks of it. I've had Tosh Plumley, CIA whistleblower. Right. They've all confirmed it. Uh, why would the Clintons send in Stevens if they had to whack him to cover up the weapons transfer? Well, first, see, the initial idea was that Stevens was going to go in and provide these covert guns, which, by the way, they're now prosecuting Mark Turry for, the DO Department of Justice, setting up Mark Turry. I'll be writing about that probably next week. But Mark Turry is innocent. The Clintons have framed him, and they've prosecuted him with the cooperation of Obama and Loretta Lynch in the Department of Justice to be the fall guy in a scheme that was really Hillary's scheme, running guns, through Chris Stevens, and then the after Gaddafi fell, which was you know a destabilizing move in favor of the Muslim Brotherhood, was insane move because remember Gaddafi had been funding Reverend Wright and Louis Farrakhan when Obama was a politician in Chicago. And Obama was benefiting from Gaddafi through Farrakhan and Reverend Wright. Obama turned on Gaddafi. Because Obama wanted to destabilize Gaddafi in order to put the Muslim Brotherhood in. Now, the guns that were being run were getting out of control. And they lost a bunch of these man pads. And Hillary began worrying, going to have airlines taken down by weapons that could be traced back to Gaddafi and ultimately to her and to Obama. And they're trying to have Chris Stevens in, in September with the 9 11 event occurred, the attack on Benghazi. Chris Stevens was trying to work with Turkey to get these weapons found. So they ordered him uh, basically taken out, stood down, had the Benghazi security force that they had paid, who were a bunch of Al-Qaeda people, come in and slaughter him. Well, and uh, Obama, Stevens was expendable at this point. And in their strategy, 
if Stevens had been captured, and I'm convinced Stevens was alive when he was found in that compound, uh, that he could have been exchanged for the blind sheik. And that was another one of the plans that Obama had in the works, that Stevens would be set up, attacked, captured, and to have a prisoner exchange for him. In the meantime... But the radicals got mad when two Navy SEALs from down the street came in and wiped a bunch of them out, so they flipped out and killed everybody. Well, and also, the, the, they got mad because Stevens was trying to take the guns away. He was trying to find the man pad. You know, it's, terrorists are fine if you want to give them weapons. You want to start taking their weapons away, they get a little bit mad. And they decided it was time to whack Stevens because they didn't like him going out to find the man pads and get them back. Sure, because whoever got those, they said, we can sell these off for 10 times the money or use them and hold the entire West hostage, blackmailing Hillary that she gave us these. Precisely, and that's what the Obama administration has been trying to hide with Benghazi from the beginning. They're still trying to hide it. They won't let you see Hillary's emails. They won't you realize that Hillary set Mark Turry up to be the fall guy in a gun running stream through, through a cutter you know, Judge Napolitano wrote an article and said the same thing I'm saying right here. I had the pictures we published at WND, the photographs of the weapons that were seized in that Qatari, the two boats from Qatari, trying to bring European-made weapons into Libya that had been arranged by Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's one of the biggest gun runners in the world. Do you That's think she can get away with all this? No, ultimately I don't. I think Hillary Clinton... Clintons are going to face a, a major defeat within the next few months, and their foundation may actually be closed. Very exciting to see these criminals fall. Plus, you and I both know they're after us. Uh, just the sooner, sooner they're politically destroyed, the better. Uh, this is serious business. I want to come back and get into the economic situation worldwide with one of the chief writers at WND.com, Dr. Jerome Corsi. Let me tell you what's so important about InfoWars.com. And this syndicated radio broadcast slash TV. We make it safe for the other cowards in libertarian and conservative and, and just pro-survival, pro-sanity media. We, we make it safe for them to cover this stuff later. And we've moved uh, conservative libertarian radio so far towards reality, away from their neocon, fake conservative behavior. It's amazing. And the guests we have on, like Dr. Corsi and so many others that just have been proven to be incredibly accurate is a godsend. That's why it's vital to tell friends and family about the broadcast. It's why it's vital to buy the books, the videos, the t-shirts, the high-quality supplements at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. You are funding the reporters, the websites, the, the crews. All of this costs a lot of money to run. I couldn't do this in New York City or L.A. Texas is more inexpensive. I mean, this type of operation in New York City would cost, I don't even want to tell you how much it would cost. The point is, we have got the meter running. We have high-quality products at very competitive prices. We're the place to shop. We're the place to support. We don't take your money at gunpoint like the government and give it to MSNBC as stimulus money. We're here saying we got quality products. We promote freedom. We're fearless. Please support us. InfoWarsStore.com. Free shipping in the month of July. We are running out of some of our very best supplements, Super Male Vitality and the Survival Shield Nascent I9X2. Prostagard is back in. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And I'm done ranting. We're going to go into some overdrive and talk to uh, John Alabama, who I apologize, got cut off by the break, and a few others. But Dr. Corsi, you've got three, four minutes to finish up. You're an expert on the economy. That's why I wanted to get you on, but more has happened since then. Please come back soon on that. But how serious is what's happening in the world economy? Well, I think you've got two things going on. One is that uh, Greece is absolutely in free fall. And this agreement is really Greece's loss of sovereignty. It's a German bank takeover of Greece. Greece is going to have to sell major assets. The, the German banks are going to move in and own um, Greece, this is going to be worse than the Nazi occupation as far as the Greeks are concerned, and it won't last long. You're going to see riots in the street, uh, streets of Greece. You're going to see panic once the Greek population realizes the controls they're under. Uh, Greek is going to go bankrupt again. Uh, the European Union and the Germans are not going to keep sending a socialist country like Greece more money so that 
you know, people who are not working can get free food. Germany's not going to do it for long. And this is going to collapse. This is the beginning of the collapse of the euro. It's the beginning of the end of the dream of the European unity and entity. It won't work. This is a draconian, banker-driven, central bank solution to a problem created by the central bankers to take over a country, and it's not going to work. The Greek people are going to be reduced to poverty. They're going to be suicides. They're going to be looking for food in the streets. I mean, this is a disaster of major proportions. Our second major crisis is that the uh, Chinese stock market is suffering 1929-like losses, and it's going to continue because that's a stock market again built by debt. These debt mountains built up around the world are going to come collapsing down. Uh, the central bankers are going to try to keep the zombie economies going by more zombie loans. Uh, they're going to try to keep prop Greek up, Greeks up. They're going to try to prop the stock market up in China. They're both going to collapse, and it'll be the beginning of a major world wide recession. When do you think that's going to happen? Happening right now. Happening even as we're speaking. So you, you think this fall and winter will be spectacular? I think by October, the U.S. stock market could crash. Unbelievable. Dr. Corsi, WND.com. Thank you so much. Amazing. Get him back on as soon as possible for a whole 30 minutes on the economy. Overdrive coming up.